Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas and in this video we're going to be talking all about getting set up with affordable cloud storage. Okay, so one of the things that I've realized recently as I have continued to run a business on the web is that as computers get faster and faster, as new models come out, as new operating systems and versions come out, one of the things that hasn't really changed over the last few years I've noticed is the amount of hard drive space your computer comes standard with. So when I first got my very first MacBook Pro, however many years ago, one of the things that I noticed is that I got a terabyte of space on the hard drive that came with the computer. Fast forward to today and I've got a newer model of MacBook Pro and now I have two terabytes, but it doesn't really seem, at least in the laptop world, that you're able to go very far beyond two terabytes. And one of the other things that I've noticed is that as I've been working with more video, I've been using a lot more space, way more than two terabytes. So while you may not be working with video, you may find yourself in the same boat as me, which is that you've got a growing collection of files that you don't necessarily want to get rid of, but you don't want to store them all on your computer. You just need a place for them so that they're safe and that you have them and you can access them if you ever need to. Now, one of the solutions to this problem that I've done in the past is I've gone through and I have connected uh, one after another of external hard drives. This works and it's fairly affordable, but what the challenge that you run into with a ton of external drives is that you have to keep track of them. You have to remember which files are on which drive and you have to know that if you're ever out of town and you need a file on one of those drives, you're out of luck. So for a lot of us, this turns us to solutions like Dropbox or Google Drive and some of these work pretty well, but there can be a pretty significant price tag attached to them. I know that for the Dropbox account that I had, I was spending about $50 a month and I found out that I'm not using really about 90% of the features that they provide. So this led me down a bit of a rabbit trail. I use a service called Backblaze, which does all of my automated off-site backups. So uh, my home Mac, as well as my laptop Mac, both automatically uh, on a daily basis backup to Backblaze, and I have unlimited storage on Backblaze to be able to uh, accommodate this. One of the things, however, that I realized recently as I was going through some of my backups is that they have a new B2 cloud storage service. So what this is in essence is just a place where you can go and upload files at an extremely affordable rate. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna show you how to get set up with Backblaze's B2 cloud storage and we'll chat a little bit more about how this could come in handy for running your online business. Okay, so one of the first things you're gonna wanna do is just go to rightly, rightly.tv slash backblaze. This is actually backblaze, there we go. This is actually an affiliate link. So uh, if you'd like to support the channel, if you'd like to support the show, uh, you can go through this affiliate link. Uh, if not, no big deal at all. You can just go to backblaze.com and this is gonna bring you to a place where you can sign up. This is uh, essentially going to get you up and running with their backup service, which is great in and of itself. It is wonderful. It's automated. It works. I've been using it for several years. However, that's not what we're going to be focusing on today. So after you create your account, one of the things that you'll notice up here is that you have this B2 cloud storage. So what you're able to do here, once you have signed up for an account uh, or you've added this particular B2 service, uh, cloud storage to your account, you can actually get up and running free. So that's one of the great things about this is that they're gonna provide you, I think it's like uh, 10 gigabytes of storage, absolutely free. And then they're gonna give you up to like one gigabyte of monthly transfer free as well. This is something like, We've talked about Amazon S3 in the past, which is a similar service, but it's much more expensive. This is all, this from what I have noticed up to this point is not only more affordable, it's actually a lot easier to use as we'll see here in a moment. So I'm in here now within the B2 uh, storage bucket section. Essentially the first thing we're gonna be creating is what's called a bucket. A bucket is just an area, a place where you're gonna be able to store things. You could kind of think of it almost as if it were just kind of a drive uh, on their cloud service that you have access to. So some 
Uh, so maybe you've got something for personal, maybe you've got something for work and you wanna separate them, that's a great way to do it. So the first thing we're gonna do to get started here is we're just gonna click on create a bucket and I'm just gonna call this uh, Rightly TV. And you have to make sure that it has no capitals or anything or any extra spaces or characters. You just wanna make sure, I think you can use dashes, but you wanna make sure that it's kinda URL friendly as it's known. Then you've got an option between if this is going to be private or if this is going to be public. If this is gonna be for files that only you are going to access, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's private. If you're gonna be putting files in here that you want to be able to share, so if you're gonna use this as kind of a replacement for Dropbox so that you can share links to files, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's public to ensure that anybody can access the URLs created by files stored on this cloud service. This one, I'm gonna go ahead, we'll make it public just because, just for the sake of this example, and we'll go ahead and create, uh, click Create Bucket. So if we scroll on down here, we'll see now that we've got this new bucket added, and they've got some settings that you can change here, but you're mainly just gonna wanna go to upload slash download to be able to go through and begin the process of working with this. So uh, this is pretty much all you need. You can work right within this uh, fire file browser right here. So what I could do is a new file and I could say maybe documents, add folder. Then I could simply click on documents and then upload files. So uploading files via the uh, web browser works. However, this can be a little bit tedious if you're gonna be moving a lot of files or folders in particular. So one of the things I decided to try and what kind of got me interested in this particular B2 cloud storage system was that you can also use third-party apps. So as usual, this uh, app that I use is specific to a Mac. So I'm sure there's gonna be other clients and apps out there for Windows that would do something, something similar. However, I use a Mac. So this piece of software that I'm using is going to be specific to a Mac. But it's an app called Transmit. And as usual, I will leave a link uh, below this video where you can check this out. Transmit essentially is kind of a glorified FTP client that allows you to connect not only to uh, FTP or SFD, uh, SFTP, but also to a number of services. And Backblaze happens to be one of those. So all you have to do uh, is click add new and you'll see that they already have one set, uh, an option here where you can select Backblaze B2 and then click next. Then they're gonna ask for your account ID and uh, application ID, both of which you can find under app keys. It's gonna be the master credentials. You're gonna wanna look for uh, app ID, uh, your master app ID, as well as your master app key. You're gonna paste them both, both here and then you're going to click connect. Obviously, I'm not gonna show those here for you right now, but what I can do is I can connect to one that I already have kind of preset. So we'll go back here I've already got one set up here and that previous set of buckets that we saw, we'll be able to connect to here. So you'll be able to see that Rightly TV is sitting right there. I've got my documents folder that I created over here. And so then I can just go through and I can begin uploading files. So just as you would be used to, if you're working with something like Finder in Mac OS X, you can just kind of drag files over there. You could drag an entire folder over here and then you'll be able to see right here live how quickly it is uploading it. You'll see that that has then been uploaded. Then one of the things that you can do as well, remember I made this particular bucket public. So what I can do is I can actually click on this and then click on the inspector and you'll see that's gonna show a number of information here. I was looking for the URL, it actually doesn't show it there. What you can do is you can right click, copy URL, paste that into your web browser and then you can share that file with anyone that you want to. So that's kind of the difference between using a public bucket or a private bucket. You just wanna be very intentional with what you're gonna be storing on there. But like I said, this could be something that you can use not only for files that you just want to save and have occasional access to, but for other things as well. Okay, so obviously this isn't something that's quite as simple to use as Dropbox or Google Drive, but the reason I decided to look into this is because I didn't necessarily need something that I have syncing to all these different devices. I just wanted it on the web. I just wanted to upload my files. And then if I ever needed to, I could just browse either in my browser or something like Transmit and just download that file if I need to. So there's a, again, it's just kind of a different uh, use case, but part of the reason I decided to just go ahead and switch to something like this, as opposed to something like Dropbox or Google Drive, 
this particular price. So let's take a quick look right here at some of the pricing. So here's the, the pricing breakdown for something like Amazon S3 or even Google Cloud. You see, it's actually going to be like over 300% cheaper than a number of these options. So let's take a look here. Now, for most of us, we're not gonna actually be storing a ton of different files on here. Like a ton of my video files, I actually do keep on external hard drives just because it's gonna be more affordable. But for most of us who are storing maybe some photos or a, a large collection of documents, we're probably only gonna need something like 100 gigabytes and then you're gonna be uploading maybe like a top of three gigabytes. So you would see over the course of an entire year, you would be spending $6.42. So that's at the time of this recording. Obviously these ty these pricing uh, type tiers can change over time. However, in terms of the amount of storage you get and the amount that you're paying for it, it's literally the most affordable and reliable option I've found yet. So you wanna make sure that you check that out. Okay, so that's it. I just wanted to share that quick tip with you guys, just because I know that there's a lot of these storage services out there. And from my opinion, and from what I've seen testing a ton of them, so they tend to be overpriced, specifically if you don't need a ton of syncing options or capabilities, uh, something like Backblaze's storage is going to do that job for you. Now, recently I actually did decide to ditch Dropbox for another service that does enable you to sync files across multiple computers. I'll be covering that in a future video. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this video and if, or subscribe to this channel, I should say, and if you found this video useful, hit that like button and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.